Facebook logged in on your phone because I. We're we're live right right this uh, right now. No, we're not. Well, we can we can expect this to happen. Yeah, I apologize. Uh, my... It's all right. You you can take the blame, but we know things like this are going to happen with this uh, very crucial and important subject. Tie in your your uh, yeah slideshow here. I'll do that <clears throat> right. Okay. So what we're talking about is what is the value of each individual and when does that value actually begin? At what point in our existence mm -hmm. are we valued? And so we're starting off with scripture looking at the value that God places upon us even before, before. we're formed in the mm -hmm. womb. So, so if there's a value placed upon us before we're even formed in the womb, Obviously, mm -hmm. there is a value that rests upon us as we are formed in the womb and carried mm -hmm. through to, to birth mm -hmm. and to life. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's a perspective that those on the opposing sides, to some extent, have, have just overlooked. Our value doesn't begin at conception. No, it doesn't. It you, doesn't. Know, uh, you know, you um, know not only Jeremiah, th this is throughout the whole Bible that that God uh, has this vision into the future, even to pick a per we know that God named a king who was to be very influential among his people a hundred years before the man was even born. Mm -hmm. He named him. That's right. Now let's just take take it slowly here. W what we're saying is, uh, we're seeing in the scripture, that like this value you're talking and i want to i want to name that value we are loved mm -hmm. loving kindness mm -hmm. it, it surrounds us mm -hmm. god has a plan and a purpose he named the man by name right. the children of israel were slaves in egypt and god brought forth a, a proper child that was guided miraculously so that he would deliver those people from Egypt. That's talking about Moses. God had his hand on this child. Even from the moment he was conceived and born, God had a plan. And so I, I want to I say something very practical, and I'm trying to shape it up. And what I'm trying to say is that, you know, when you just let God show forth what he calls life and how valuable it is to him, you can see that he has something magnificent mm -hmm. in his mind mm -hmm. regarding every child. Mm -hmm. I like this next, uh, these next verses here. There are some other translations which allow it to make a little bit more sense, but go ahead and read that, and we'll, we'll talk about what it is that's trying to say here. Okay, Steve. I will read. Is this one? <clears throat> Psalm 139, verse 13. We're going to go 13, 14, 15, and 16. You yep, stop me when you're ready. all the way down to 16. So here we go. Go all the way. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which, is, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Wow. Beautiful, man. That is beautiful. It's powerful. Psalm 139, 13 through 16. You know, given these scripture that very clearly lay out God's pre-knowledge mm -hmm. of your existence, of the mm -hmm. fact that you would come into being. Mm -hmm. And in the examples that we've read thus far, mm -hmm. speaking of Jeremiah, for example, it's pretty clear that these were 
instances where everybody was a willing participant. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah's father and mother, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would wife. assume husband and wife, mm-hmm. good Jewish religious folk that followed the law mm-hmm. of Moses, who is going to bring forth a child who God would make a prophet among his people, mm-hmm. a chosen people. Yeah. So this all looks pretty, pretty, pretty meat and potatoes, mm-hmm. you know. What about in the instant of something that was not God's plan? Mm-hmm. And and you know, we 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 could we could specify by talking about rape or incest. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the scriptures I think are going to cover that, and we can we can talk a little bit about these verses that are coming up that talk about God is involved as we're seeing here. He's involved in the bringing forth of life. There are scriptures that talk about where he is the one who decides when the womb opens and when it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so there is no such thing necessarily. I don't believe from scripture that there is such a thing as an accidental pregnancy. I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Because even in rape, God is able to open and close the womb. Yes. I believe that. Mm-hmm. Is it his will that that happens? Absolutely not. Is he heartbroken over the pain and suffering that has taken place through those events? Absolutely. Yes, he's... But here's the beauty of God. If we would believe that he works all things after the counsel of his own will. Now catch this. It doesn't say he is responsible for all things that happen. Only that he works, works all it. things after yes. the counsel yes. of his own will. Yes. He will always bring about good out of every circumstance. Certainly. It doesn't mean that he's responsible for every circumstance. That's exactly but right. But only that if we submit those things to him, he will always bring something good out of it. There's a few scriptures we could use. Well, there's a few, ex- there's a few examples. That's right. David with Bathsheba. That's right. I, I don't know... That when a king says come, you say I'm not coming. That's right. Um, when Hagar was given to Abram yeah. by his wife Sarah, who was a slave. That's right. Now I'm not suggesting that she wasn't um, ready to accept Abram into her bed, mm-hmm. but it wasn't her choice or her idea or her idea. No. So, so we have instances in Scripture stories where women, against their will or better judgment, that's right, were forced into relationship with men. Now, not, I'm not I'm not describing rape, rape per se, right? But we're definitely looking at scenarios where the women weren't well. Hagar's, Hagar's situation is very near. It's very she close. Was, she was practically commanded to fulfill the wishes of Sarah mm-hmm. and Abraham, yeah. who Sarah had the certainly, idea. Certainly, certainly. Hosea yeah. is another perfect example. He was told to take a woman of whoredoms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those, those offspring were through acts of fornication. Not with him, by the way. Not with him, that's right. Correct. And so it was perfectly in God's plan to give us an object lesson that you know what the same way i accept hosea i want you to go marry this woman and accept all that comes with it and let me use that as an object lesson to teach you a blessing about me very good Uh, you know i think this is where what i'm trying to drag Mm -hmm. out of the conversation here there are circumstances in your life that are unfair Mm-hmm. painful extremely destructive. extremely destructive and painful psychologically mm-hmm. mentally mm-hmm. sometimes physically that's right but we're to always in every circumstance mm-hmm. understand God's will that's right obey it because we trust him enough that's right. mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. understand that he knows what's best for us, right. and is able to turn darkness into Praise the God. brightest and most beautiful Praise light. Right. And that I was looking for Romans eight twenty eight, 
And we know that God works all things together for good Amen. for those that love him. It mm-hmm. doesn't say that he's responsible for all those things, no. but no. only that he will work gonna those work things yes. for yes. our good. Amen. That's a big, big, beautiful reality that we leave out of our decision-making process. That's right. And poor women that have suffered are so scared and so hurt and so broken that they're making a decision, and I'm not saying I fault them because I don't. I no. can't. I don't know what I would do in those incredibly painful circumstances. But they're not given the opportunity to realize that, you know what, there might be a better way and a way that would lead to good if I would just stop. Mm-hmm. Bathsheba's blessing was Solomon. That's right. And Solomon became a blessing to the world. That's right. Mm-hmm. And continues to be today. Mm-hmm. That's right. We just read a moment ago from from, his from books that were written by Solomon him, himself. Yeah. Sure. So so, you know, L- let me add another dimension to this because we we came out of this idea that God loves us. He has an idea where He's going to take us. Now, brothers, here we are. Christians. And we're talking like Christians tonight. We're trying to encourage our listeners to see that there's something positive that God can do in every situation and work out something good. What about our own lives? Has it ever occurred to you, and I'm sure it has, and that's why I'm bringing this out, Mm -hmm. that we have, in, in a certain sense, aborted what God had originally intended for us. Have we done that, brothers? So Did we stuck. turn our own way? Absolutely. Did we force our own will mm-hmm. when we saw we were doing wrong, not knowing that God was about to take us to something beautiful? We stumbled and fumbled around for years. Yeah. Now we've taken up this book only to learn, as we look back, that we should have let God have it at the beginning. Yeah. And he's willing to take it now. Let's say it to our listeners, male and female. Yes. God is, we have aborted God's plans in our lives, but we're trying to get back on that highway. That's right. And it'll take you back. The word will take you back. And God will take you back. That's right. So, and and so, his his feelings haven't changed. No. Not a bit. And his plans hasn't changed. You, you, you messed up the perfect plan that, that he had for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you thwarted his blessing. Mm-hmm. You abandoned mm-hmm. and forsook this experience that we can have with him mm-hmm. yeah. for something of your own choosing. Mm-hmm. Self will. But his attitude and feelings mm-hmm. towards you <laughs> haven't ever changed a whit. Not a bit. Brother. Not a bit. Brother. As a matter of fact, he's got plan B and C and D. In his back pocket. That's right. Well, we and we have we have scriptural evidence of that. When when we rely on our own wisdom and strength and understanding, and we are scrambling to fix a problem, and then we fix that problem in our own wisdom, it leaves him scrambling to try to bring that <laughs> that experience back around. Look what happened with Abram. When, yeah. when he lied and said, Sarah, yeah. Sarah is my sister. Yeah. That happened to him twice. Mm-hmm. twice. He messed up the first time. It was brought back around. Right. Happened to him again. When we try to fix it ourselves, he's got to scramble and bring you over the same painful road sometimes yeah. to give you another chance to learn the lesson and to ex- express the faith that you didn't do the first time. Amen. Amen. The faith. Express the faith. So, so we're, talking, we're, we're talking about believers right now. Women who would be of of a believing mindset who might be confronted with an idea of, you know what, I have this pregnancy and I'm scared to death and I don't know what to do. Abortion sounds pretty good. Hopefully we're giving some encouragement that there might be a better option. For women who aren't of a believing mindset, hopefully... Hopefully we can, we can see that the value placed upon that, that unborn child in your womb began before this world even existed. Amen. The same way yeah. God's value of you uh-huh. before you were formed in your mother's womb mm-hmm. was placed upon you before this world ever existed. Well, there's, there's another issue that's troubling, and that's that this has all been politicized. 
we're living in a country and it's become very popular as of late to demonize the other side of the argument. Right. So conservatives or those who are of a conservative mindset mm -hmm. when it comes to this issue mm -hmm. are also racists, bigots, xenophobes, and Islamophobes. Right. So you're not just mm -hmm. denying a woman her reproductive right. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. You're all, you're part of this group that typically speaking or generally speaking would also endorse Donald Trump and all these ideolo ideologies. Lump it all together. <laughs> that are, are just repugnant mm -hmm. to those who disagree with the pro-choice mm -hmm. side of the political argument. Mm -hmm. And and so what also needs to be addressed <clears throat> in this video is why conservative Christians oppose abortion to begin with. Mm -hmm. Why their their <coughs> their belief system is so vehemently opposed and and what what is the underlying motivation mm -hmm. is it hatred and cruelty mm -hmm. is it a desire to lord or rule over another class of people that conservative christians protest against the practice of abortion or do they actually have good intentions is, is their desire to protect those who are unable to protect themselves? Mm -hmm. From a very practical standpoint here, take the religion out of it. Mm -hmm. We're talking about what I think science has determined very clearly in recent years to be a living form of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. So science has confirmed mm -hmm. that that em embryo is a form of life and has feelings, mm -hmm. can experience pain, mm -hmm. emotional distress, mm -hmm. and at some stage of the game is viable to live outside of the mother's influence altogether. In other words, it could be surgically removed mm -hmm. and live and grow to adulthood. That's right. Live a full life. So we're, uh, when you, when we're talking about the conception of a child, mm -hmm. we're talking about the beginning of a life mm -hmm. that exists within another human being. Mm -hmm. So we're not just simply talking about women's repro reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. See, women, <clears throat> you do have reproductive rights. Mm -hmm. You have the right not to fornicate that's right. Or to have sex with your husband. That's right. You have the right to have self-respect. You do. You have the you right. You have the right to protect yourself That's right. in a sexual encounter, even with your husband. That's right. To use the proper procedures that are in place scientifically, mm -hmm. not to be pregnant if that's what you desire. Mm -hmm. I have surgically... Um, Taking care of that. Taking care of my ability to create more children. Mm -hmm. So I have reproductive rights, mm -hmm. and I have protected my right not to produce any more. Mm -hmm. I'm good where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So you do have those reproductive rights, and I would stand with you and fight for you mm -hmm. to protect your reproductive rights. But the moment the conception of that life form has taken place, and it... It is there. There are other things to take into consideration. There's, there's other rights. There's other rights. Yes, there are. And our Constitution mm -hmm. states that uh, th those of us who are citizens mm -hmm. have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Danny, do, do, let's go back a moment to that video. The quietness in that courtroom 
when that man asked the pinpointed question. And she didn't want to answer it. It was pretty obvious. You're going to take the life of this child when it is just about to be born. And she had to gulp a little bit because we're talking about something. We're talking about taking the life of another human being. And it's not a small matter. You told me 20 years later, your dear friend was still emotionally reeling at a decision she made 20 years before. Yeah. This is not a small matter. No, this is a living person yeah. who's going to grow up and have a life. You, you know, when the, the terrorists go, whoever they are, and they go into a public place, what astounds me is they are gunning down people they don't even know who have mothers and fathers and children and a place in society and a place with dreams around their whole existence, and they're going to be cut down so needlessly, and they don't even know the person who's shooting the gun. Yeah. These are children <clears throat> who have a future and dreams and hopes yeah. and ambitions and potentials yeah. and a place in God's heart. We've already established that. Yeah. You know, the, the debate goes back and forth over and over and over. We hear it. Pro-life, pro-choice, pro-life, pro-choice. Everyone's deciding whether or not they're pro-life or pro-choice. And some of us ask, well, what is God's position? Is he pro-life mm -hmm. or pro-choice? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, my position is his position, and it's this. God is pro-life. Pro-life. And he is pro-choice. He is. You're right. God is absolutely 100% pro-life. We see that clearly throughout Scripture. But we also see he is pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Because love allows the exercise of free will mm. of that choice with all of the consequences that consequences come, along with, it. That come yeah. along with it. So there is no true, genuine, legitimate, biblical Christian who would ever support legislation to take away this woman's right to choose. Yeah. It would be biblically immoral to support legislation to remove right. Yeah. A true Christian will not do that. But at the same time, a true Christian will love and encourage and forgive and Amen. embrace mm -hmm. even while they're making the wrong choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's what and does. educate. And encourage, and and encourage, encourage yeah. a right so, decision. So yes. we're not saying that you don't have the right, but what we are saying is consider that there's a better way, mm -hmm. that there is mm -hmm. a way that's healthier. There is a way that won't leave you with spiritual, emotional, psychological, trauma. relational trauma, trauma. scars Long that will destroy you. Mm. Because with your right and ability, to have a child or not have a child, one thing that's being overlooked is that the very reason you have the ability to have a child is because you were created in the image of a God Mercy. that wants to express his love to you in a way yeah. by allowing you the beautiful gift of creating mm, and giving life reality. because you were created in his image. Mm, beautiful. And all we are doing is we're telling a woman she can have the right to make these painful decisions that could destroy her mentally, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, relationally, without letting her know that that very choice that you're going to exercise was given to you as a gift from the God of heaven yeah. who wants you to understand him better by giving you the ability to create life because you were created in his image. Beautiful. And that entire argument is just completely thrown out. It's not even dwelt upon. You, you know what I didn't preface what you just said by saying that I will now? Is that you're looking at three guys who do not vote. Do you have a voter's I've registration card? I've never, I've never voted in my life. I won't. 
Do you vote now? I was going to vote when they were going to have more beer joints in Portland. Because, <laughs> and I went down to vote and found out that I was out of Portland and I couldn't vote. You know, they wanted to open up more beer joints and I just thought, you know, we don't need that. So I was going to go down there and you, vote. You know, you can't legislate morality. You can't do it. Now listen, murder, that's one thing. Theft, that's one thing. There are certain th things that are just so socially wrong that there has to be laws to protect people. But there are things that are moral, that are between a free moral agent who has been given the gift of life and the ability to choose and suffer consequences mm -hmm. and ultimately be redeemed or lost based upon those, those actions and choices mm -hmm. and consequences. Mm -hmm. You can't legislate mm -hmm. that. That mm -hmm. has to be left alone. It has right. to be left between the, the individual and their God. Mm -hmm. yes. Abortion is one of them. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that it's right to have an abortion. No. I'm not saying that. I believe that there is a, a moral destruction that takes place. Because the same way God has sheltered us from all of our wrong consequences so that the weight of the guilt and the shame doesn't crush us, these poor women, they are being sheltered by the very grace of God that they're rejecting. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know it. Mm. Mercy. Yeah, that, what are you with the rest of this discussion slash study, what I'd like to do is is to reveal to you what has been revealed to humanity through patriarchs and through prophets so that you understand that there are consequences for things that you do That's right. in this life. Some of them were written down for your admonition. Mm -hmm. And... I don't judge you one way or the other for the decisions that you make. I just, my, my only responsibility is to love you. Mm -hmm. and, and loving you is to say you're hurting yourself That's or right. you're hurting society or That's right. you're hurting the country That's right. by this participation mm -hmm. in this behavior. Mm -hmm. And I can speak partially from experience and partially from the confidence that I have in the, in the voice of prophecy. Because the reason I don't vote is because I know the end of the story. That's right. I know how this is going to go eventually. I'm not saying that I'm not politically involved. I am. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a political issue yeah, tonight. Tonight. And I will be the first. This is our vote. When, when rights are taken from you, mm -hmm. constitutional rights, to stand up in firm opposition against it. Mm -hmm. If it comes to a referendum, I would actually vote on it. Sure. You cannot take my rights from me. That's right. And, and, and I believe there will come a time mm -hmm. where this right that we're using right now, the First mm -hmm. Amendment, mm -hmm. with others, will be taken from me. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I will fight it all the way. You, you know, Rowdy, one thing you did say, though, brother, is that this woman who is pregnant has a right concerning her child that is independent from us mm -hmm. and what we think she ought to do. Mm -hmm. But our government does recognize that if you take a human life, mm -hmm. they're coming to your house. Mm -hmm. That's right. You get in an argument... And the gun comes out, and before you think about it, you shoot down your wife or your child. Yeah. yeah. They're coming. Right. Because there is a part about killing. That's right. That this, I know what God says about it. He says, thou shalt not. But the, even our society has picked that up and said, we're going to come, and it's a possibility yeah. you will spend the rest of your life in prison. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's. Let's look at the next verse because we're going in that direction. Yeah. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of okay. thee. Look at these personal pronouns that are being applied. He's applying the personal pronoun, uh, one of existence at the time of the womb, in the womb, during the womb, in that process, he was 
even then being held by God. So, so we have verses that talk about God's value on a person from eternity past, God's love of a person from eternity past. Uh, we had a, just a couple scriptures ago where, where God knew this person, their days were written out, and he, he knew the substance before the substance ever existed, mm -hmm. and he knew the days before the, of this person before mm -hmm. the days ever happened. So, so there is a value and a reality that exists in the heart of mind of God about each person before their actual mm -hmm. existence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we need to learn to start thinking about people as an object of value before mm -hmm. conception, mm -hmm. because that's the way God views them. Mm -hmm. I, I believe you're right. Continue. To explain, Rowdy, with, with what we're seeing on the screen so, right now. Right. So we talked uh, just a little bit ago about, about the idea that there is no such thing as an accidental birth. Okay? There are tragic consequences that result in birth. Yes. But those births are never accidental because it's God himself who opens and Amen. closes the womb. Amen. And we've only pulled two here. There are hundreds throughout biblical yes. history where yes. God has restrained the, mm -hmm. the man or woman's ability to procreate, mm -hmm. to engage in the very gift of life giving that he gave them when he made them in his image. Mm. So God, for his reasons, says no, 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 no. And then other times yeah. he says yeah. yes, 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 yes. 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 And we just picked two verses out of literally hundreds. God remembered Rachel, hearkened to her, Here's a God who's listening, who's paying attention, and so then she's opens praying, her womb. She's praying. Rachel's requesting mm -hmm. that's right. that God would grant her mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. child. That's right. The other wife had all those children, all the slave girls had all, and mm -hmm. down to the very end of 12 children, yeah. the last two mm -hmm. were the ones that Jacob wanted in the first place, and that was the ones by Rachel. That's right. And finally, mm -hmm. as it says... That's right. He opened up their ability to have children. Yeah. And the Lord God closed up the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, mm -hmm. Abraham's wife. Mm -hmm. So here we see very closed clearly it that it is God himself who is intimately involved in this whole process of life being brought forth. We have the example of, of Abram and Sarai in their what, late 80s, 90s. They're, 90s. they're nearing 100 when it was humanly 100. impossible for the biological process to take place that would result in conception when it was no longer no in way. human's ability to make it happen. God gives an object lesson. That's, that's right. You can't do it. Only I can bring about that's right. the opening of the womb. That's, right. that's, that's right. me who does that. Because guess what? When you're 28 and you have a child, nine months after you're married, that's still me doing it. That's right. That's still me. I love this question that Job asks. You know, he's he's in a bad place. He has just experienced some really bad stuff, and and now he's feeling sorry for himself, and he asks a question. Basically, why didn't I die in the womb, from the womb? Why couldn't I, why did I not give up the ghost, stop breathing? Yeah. Why wasn't I not stillborn when I came out of the belly? Mm -hmm. Stillborn. Here's God's answer. Well, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Wow. In other words, shall I bring you all the way to the point of birth and then not allow you to be brought forth? And that's exactly what this proposition that yeah. put forth in Virginia in New York State is is contemplating. That's right. Yeah. The termination yeah. of a pregnancy that has come full term. Mm. Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? See, Say it, thy God. Yeah, yeah. Basically, shall I bring forth conception? Shall I allow this process to begin to grow and take place and then shut the womb? No, that's not, that's not God. That's not God's intent. That's right. It is never God's work to bring forth the gift of life in opening the womb mm -hmm. and then not see it mm -hmm. through to complete fulfillment. So, so when women are having miscarriages, it is never God's work. No. It is not him. He doesn't do that. Well, we're we're not stupid. Maybe we look like it in this video that we're presenting <laughs> an idea that the world almost laughs at 
But what's happening now in our world is that we have a world that has turned away from God mm -hmm. and they are rewriting the very essence of life itself. Right. They're in a courtroom deciding his moment that baby is born, yeah. we're going to write on a piece of paper that you have the right to take its life. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But when God comes back into the picture through his word, we see clearly this is not what he intended. So we continue to see the value that God places on life, the value of our pre-existence. Uh, here we go. Here's the next one. I was dependent on you from birth. From, birth. Mm. from my mother's womb, you've been my God. Yeah. Now the idea isn't from or outside of my mother's womb, not at birth did you become my God, but while in the womb, the, the process of the womb being in my mother's womb, you have been involved, you have made that happen, you have been my God. Amen. Yes. It's God that brings life, period. Yes. It's God that sustains life. Yes. And it is God yes. that is involved in that life from conception all the way through birth. So that whole womb process, he is saying, you've been my God. You've been there. I really pray those who are tuning in and they're watching this discussion understand why someone who has, who is Jewish, who is Christian, Muslim, why they may feel strongly about these things. Mm -hmm. It's because this is what God has revealed to us mm -hmm. through his word, That's right. mm -hmm. through patriarchs and through prophets. And this informs us as to how he feels towards us, mm -hmm. what his thought process, process is, towards that little baby before it formed in the womb. That's right. Wow, it was growing That's right. in the womb. That's right. And as it was brought forth from the womb. Yeah. You know, Danny, you said in your opening comments that the young girl was fulfilling her father's will. Her father and mother had poured out their desire for her in this matter about whether to keep this child or not. The trouble is, there's another father whose will needs to be considered. Yeah. It would have helped her that day. Oh, yeah. If she would have said, I hear you, Mom and Dad, but there's another voice I hear that says that I should do something different. Raise them lower. Yeah. yeah. As a father, I can't imagine if I had a 23-year-old daughter that I was proud of. Man, she just graduated from college yeah. with honors. She's in medical school, finishing, just about to start her, her, her career as a doctor. I am so proud of her. Mm -hmm. Oh no, she's pregnant. And all of my hopes and dreams for her as a father, I see crashing and burning. I yeah, I, sy I sympathize with that as I well. I can absolutely mm -hmm. sympathize. Sure. You know, here's the thing though. <clears throat> what some of you may not know about my brother Rowdy, is that there are other options. Rowdy's evidence of this. Rowdy and his beautiful wife, Angie, I'd like to emphasize the oh, beautiful she's hot, on, your, on your wife. I'm a lucky man. <laughs> you are. God yeah. bless you, my we, man. We all are. We're all lucky, considering what we look like. Um, <laughs> Did I say how hot she was? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get past it either. Okay. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, once I shake this picture of Angie out of my head, I'll remember what I'm talking about, which is that um, you've adopted two children. Recent. Practically three, yeah. Recently. Two recently. Yeah. You, three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technically speaking. So these people will likely grow up needing psychotherapy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, they will likely grow into, right and I'm, I'm talking about because <laughs> they are of, currently at two years old uh, receiving. because of your, and in, 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 because of your involvement. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding, brother. Um, they will probably grow to be wonderful people. 
Yes. Wonderful they already people. are. Yeah. Delightful. Now, they have yeah. biological parents. who likely could have damaged them. And we know for a fact would have. They were planning on leaving these newborns with crack-addicted friends. Hmm. Yeah. And who knows the life that that child would have ended up with God bless you, under brother. circumstances like that. Or if it would have survived at all. It wouldn't have. So, so what looked to be a horrible situation, a child destined for pain and suffering, mm. Mm. has been turned into something wonderful. Wonderful. Not only for the children, mm -hmm. but for you and Angie. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Didn't we talk about <clears throat> how God takes something that he didn't really want mm -hmm. to happen? Mm -hmm. Angie just good. posted a picture of Eli, who just turned five. Just five yesterday. Yeah. Beautiful, 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 beautiful little boy. Man. Yeah, I saw it. And, and I know And I wish I he's could hilarious. claim that as he, my own, but... <laughs> yeah, you have no right. He is he is hilarious. Yeah. And I, I know. Smart. Oh, so smart. I, I have children similar, mm -hmm. and I know the joy that it brings. Wonderful. As miserable as life can sometimes feed you, mm -hmm. just a simple statement of humor... Maybe not even intentional humor, but humor mm -hmm. from my child mm -hmm. can turn everything wrong in life on its ear, brother. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. wonderful. God has done a beautiful thing with my children for me. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure that he has and will continue for That's you. Right. So there are options. We didn't used to purposely destroy life right. because of Mistakes. Mm -hmm. mistakes, mistakes, mm -hmm. because of hostilities mm -hmm. perpetrated on mm -hmm. us, or treachery. Mm -hmm. We didn't used to end life as a result right. of those things happening right. to us. We used to preserve it, and and even in the case of treachery, mm -hmm. where someone commits violence to you mm -hmm. resulting in a child mm -hmm. and psychologically damages you to the point where you don't feel like you could take on the responsibility mm -hmm. of looking in the face of that child every day. Mm -hmm. There's adoption. That's right. There are options. Mm -hmm. There are options. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many children I know of that were saved out of the mountains in the Philippines that were going to be thrown into a river because they were the, 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 they were ancestral children. Mm. Wow. In other words, fathers that had... Children of incest. Uh, yep. They were children of incest, correct. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so um, who are living with foreigners <laughs> of great wealth now, wow. enjoying wonderful lives, wow. but were about to be thrown into rivers wow. to drown and drowned because wow. they were... The, the result of an ancestral yeah. mm -hmm. embarrassing mm -hmm. relationship. There are options. Mm -hmm. There are other options. Yeah. Far healthier options. Yeah, for everybody involved. That's right. For everybody involved. Okay, what's next? <clears throat> Luke, he is not. 20. He is not the God of the dead. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, mm. because he considers all people to be alive to him. Now this goes perfectly with the previous verse. Skip back one. Now this is Jesus speaking. Here. From oh, my Lord. womb, from my mother's womb, you have been my God. So while in the womb, he says, God, you have been my God from the time I was conceived all through the womb process. You have been my God. Now here's what's interesting. Go to the next verse. Jesus says, that he's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. So put these two together. <laughs> Look at that picture, man. Great. In, essence, he is, in essence, when that child is in that womb, he's alive. He's alive. Because God, God formed him 
knit him, stitched him together in that womb. And God is the God of the living. Of the living. Mm. And so at what scripture? point yeah. is that a living being? Obviously, as we've just, you've just basically made a definition by putting two scriptures together. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, you do that a lot. I love how you do it. Wonderful. And, and, I, and I hope people are seeing it. What Riley just did <clears throat> is he used two scriptures to define a principle for you. God says in one place that he is the God of the baby in the womb. Mm. And in another place, he says that he is the God not of the dead, no, living. but of the living. Amen. So the child in the womb is alive and he belongs to God. That's right. He doesn't belong to you. That's right. He's not your right. You do not have rights to the living That's right. in the womb. That's right. Although you may have done something that resulted, in your opinion, in the birth or conception mm -hmm. of a child, mm -hmm. you actually had less to do with it than you actually knew. That's right. You didn't create life. Life was created in you. Life was permitted mm -hmm. to be in you. And all life is his. It's not your own. No, it's not. No. Yeah. Mercy. Powerful. Rowdy? <clears throat> Continuing with this same thought. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby jumped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she loudly exclaimed, How blessed are you among women and how blessed is the infant in your, in your womb. Why should this happen to me, to have the mother of my Lord visit me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Listen, there has got to be taking place cognitive on some level Awareness, awareness, thought, feeling mm -hmm. for this story to make any sense. It, ha it has to be possible. It has to absolutely be possible. And medical science has already proven that the infant in the womb. Affected by music. By the mother's voice. Diet. Diet. By, by the emotional state of the people yes. around the mother yes. and the mother. Yes. Yes. The baby Emotional. is being affected. Mm. That can only happen if there's thought, if there's feeling on some level, some cognitive reality mm -hmm. taking place That's right. with this child. It's in the womb. It's being affected in the womb. Let Perfect. me read this again. And, there, this so and that, that indicates more than anything else that there is life taking place. Yes. Only life can have... Let, let me read this again. Go ahead. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby jumped in her womb. Mm. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she loudly exclaimed, mm. How blessed are you among women, and how blessed is the infant in your womb? Why should this happen to me, to have the mother of my Lord visit me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb jumped. For joy. Look at that no. last word. I'm what is you. joy? A Happiness. feeling, an emotion, oh, an expression. An experience. Only mm -hmm. living, intelligent life can experience joy. Yeah. So and when you, does you know, life take you, place? You know why he jumped? Because in Psalms it says, in the presence of of the Lord is of the fullness, Lord. Of joy. fullness of joy. And wow. pleasures forevermore. And wow. pleasures forevermore. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's forever settle the argument on when life takes place. It takes place when God mm -hmm. knits that that brand new life that has always been in his heart and in his mind, and he's been waiting for eternity to bring into mm. reality mm. and existence mm. the relationship that he has been having in his love affair with you for all eternity mm. past, mm. waiting mm. for that moment, and then he stitches 
us together mm -hmm. in our mother's womb mm -hmm. so that we can become a reality Beautiful. and experience the love that he's already had for us and with hope in his heart reciprocate that back to him yes that happens ah, hallelujah in the womb that's powerful thank god for these scriptures y'all <clears throat> you know people misunderstand god they quote scriptures like Exodus 20, 13, you are not to murder. Which is the right expression. I, I use this translation for a reason mm -hmm. because most people would just say, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. I have a testimony on this that I'd like to share. Please do. When I, I was raised with the idea, thou shalt not kill. And I was, I was strong in the belief that it is not my right under any circumstances to take anyone's life. That I would be wrong to take the life of another person. So I was pretty strong on this do not kill thing. And it caused me a lot of conflict in the military. I went into the military as a corpsman, as a, as, a, as a medical specialist. I was stationed with the Marines, did most of my time with the Marines, with combat units, frontline units. And I didn't want to take part in some of the training that I guess on, was required of the corpsman to, to be proficient in the use of a weapon to take life in the protection of the Marines in a combat unit. Now, I was always fine with that. I, I had no problem with, with using my weapon or my ability to protect my Marines, but I didn't want to practice the art of taking life. I just didn't believe in it. And I didn't believe, I didn't believe in it right up until the time I was challenged by a good friend of mine uh, named Stephanie. And we had a conversation about this. And she brought to my attention that I needed to look at this a little better because the idea of do not kill has a better interpretation, which is exactly in line with this, that there is a, there is a premeditated component with a desire to inflict harm and take life that is kind of left out of the translation. Mm -hmm. And then as I went back and revisited it and looked at it, and looked at biblical history, I was confronted with the fact that God's people were a people of warfare and under his direction were told Commanded. to go to war Commanded with to the war. nations around them and destroy them. Mm -hmm. And so I had, to, I had to look at my position and realize that, you know what, I'm wrong. There, there is a time in the protection of innocence and the valuation of things that are important where the taking of life might be necessitated and you look at police you know uh, you, you look at a police sniper Georgia's. who's up on a building and there's a hostage situation and that guy is about to start killing people unless you take him or out starts first, killing people or starts killing people and you mm -hmm. need to end that as quick as possible so well, I, I do want to add something to this. Um, we talked about the young lady and the emotional repercussions that she was still suffering. Mm -hmm. And this, this is no accident that these young men that are carried off to war, and they're trying to figure all out what you were just talking about. They, they're commanded by their nation to go and kill. Mm -hmm. And they come home and they are bent out of shape for years to That's come. Right. Why? Because something very sacred, Dramatic God's trying to stress. protect you right here. Mm -hmm. He's trying to, to, to tell you, you know, you might do this now, but this thing's going to walk behind you many years because right. you are destroying life. That's right. And I'm the creator of life. Mm -hmm. And I also would like to say regarding soldiers and in the Bible, that yeah. when it came time to build the temple, mm -hmm. David was rejected. Because he was a man of blood and That's a right. warrior. Yeah. That's right. God let him be successful on the battlefield, mm -hmm. but when it came to higher spiritual things, That's right. David could not enter there. He wasn't qualified. He wasn't qualified because he was a 
he had taken life. Right. Something very sacred is here. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I think it's the Bible refers to the destruction of the sinner, of the wicked, as a strange yes, act. That's right. Because it's so contrary to the to, to the nature of God that that he should cause the death of anything. Mm -hmm. It's always, death is always connected, as far as I could see, the best I can tell. Death is always connected to the consequences of decision. Right. And its, and its connection with sin in general. Mm -hmm. So sin, when it's fully matured, bringeth about death. Yes, that's what right. the Bible says. Right. So as a consequence... Of the, of allowing the presence of sin. Inevitably, mm -hmm. the end thereof is is death. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's not something that God desires for you. It's not something that he's he's eagerly waiting to perpetrate mm -hmm. on you, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't feel quick mm -hmm. or desirous of perpetrating death on others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But sometimes there are justifiable reasons. Mm -hmm. Typically in emergency situations mm -hmm. where God permits it. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's never his but there are will. All, there are even consequences no, to that. It's never his will no. that life no. is taken, that no. there is suffering. That there is a, that's not what he desires. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're living in a sinful world where things aren't exactly as he would have them. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that we do and experience, he never intended for us. Mm -hmm. And we need to keep that in mind. The Bible says what you just said. Let me quote a scripture to, to put these two things together. The Bible says that God is not willing that anyone would perish. That's right. That all people would come to him and receive eternal life. Right. And what Danny quoted, it's in the book of Isaiah, I believe. And it said that there is a strange act on the part of God that's going to take place at the end of this world. He will burn out of existence all the people that have rejected him. Now, he's not mad at them. They will not be happy in the kingdom that he is preparing for us. Mm -hmm. Where will he put them? Where will they go? They'll only pollute the universe like sin has already polluted our world, and he has to take soap and water, and in this case it's fire, and he has to destroy yeah. sin That's right. and sinner. Right. They have to be destroyed. Yeah. I think the point you were making, though, is that something that we're going to look at, there is a difference between willful, intentional taking of life, yes, which is sin and which is wrong, and other circumstances where it's a sad necessity. Mm -hmm. Sad yeah. necessity. We need to understand that there is a difference, and we're going to look at mm -hmm. something here in a moment, which I think is the point you were making. There is a sin involved when there is an intentional, willful taking of life, and that's what we're going to look at here in a minute. That's, well, that's right. right now, uh, there's, a, there's a logic in this abortion process now. We're going to address it right now. Yeah that the woman has a right about her life and her body and she has a decision that she can make inside there that shouldn't involve anyone else. Hmm. So we're going to have a scripture here. That, That's that right. Addresses. We're going to speak to that specifically right now. Before I read this yeah. next verse, which contains language that will be troubling to some, uh, I want to be clear that I'm not casting judgmental aspersions on anyone that's participated in the behavior who's, who's practiced abortion in the past. I'd also say this, and to be clear, the reason why I was involved in an abortion, the reason why most of the people in that clinic that morning were there to have an abortion performed was because when you have a child, 
There is a financial obligation. Financial. Mm -hmm. There is a personal mm -hmm. obligation. Uh, it's it's going to to detract from your private freedom. your private life and your freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Daily maintenance of a child. Continuous. Takes, takes your time, time and effort. Time money. and effort. Money. Time and energy. Mercy. <laughs> it will affect going to your, affect you. Your relationships with others physically, emotionally. It's going to change in everything. every way. It will affect your relationships yeah, with that's others. That's right. Yeah. Do, do you remember how intimate you was with your wife and how often hey, before let me tell you, there were children around? I do. Your life is, young people, yeah. when you have a child, your life is going to change. Big time. Mm -hmm. Big time. And, and now let's address that, Danny. That's what people perceive when they're in the, in the abortion clinic. To a small degree, even. Yeah. They, they, they probably it. got just a seed of an idea of what freedom they're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Watch out. That's mm -hmm. the primary motive that I see in this world. Unfortunately, this. I'm afraid that the vast majority of those participating in this behavior are motivated by that reason. Sure. This, this is going to cost me something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, why did it happen? It happened because you chose to have physical relationship with another human being outside of the confines of marriage, mm -hmm. many, much of the time. Much of the time. Not always. Though. Not always. Or outside of a comfortable scenario for yourself. Name that. What do you mean? Say you're already married, mm -hmm. but you're not financially where you'd like to be. I got you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. you. You would in the future like to have a child, but maybe but you'd want yet. to stay at home with that child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you're not financially there yet. So you'd like to both continue to work, mm -hmm. pursue your careers mm -hmm. for a certain number of years mm -hmm. before bringing a child into the equation. Mm -hmm. There are people that abort for that reason. That's mm -hmm. right. Not because they're not married or they're going to be alone yeah. mm -hmm. raising a child. Mm -hmm. Many times, it's it's just because they're not. It's not convenient yet. Yeah. Yeah. And there's things you can do to, to, prevent, to prevent the children from coming. Prevent it. Correct. Yes. So, so we're looking at the whole situation. So there's loose, promiscuous, fun behaviors and lifestyles taking places. Women end up pregnant, yeah. and it's inconvenient. Or you know, I really, I'm not interested in a long-term relationship with this guy, so the baby doesn't matter to me. He doesn't matter to me. Mercy. So many reasons. So many. Thus, read the next verse. Flee whoredom. Uh, what other words can we use for whoredom? Well, I've put two verses up here. Uh -huh. It's the same verse, uh -huh. two There's different translations. Uh -huh. So in the other translation, it says, Free forn from, flee from fornication. Mm. In other words, fornication by definition is sex that takes place outside of the confines of marriage. That's right. Okay, this is not the same as adultery, where you're married. And you have sex outside of that marriage circle. Fornication. You're Fornication not married. Not married. is when you're not married mm -hmm. and you're involving yourself in sexual act behavior mm -hmm. with other people. Right. Outside the confines of marriage. So it says to flee that behavior, to leave it alone, to run and from run it, to, to, to not be involved with it. And he goes on to say that when you commit sin, most sins, uh, it's that a human being commits, it's outside of the body. Lying is a sin outside of the body. Stealing a, a sin outside of the body. Uh, whatever. But he who commits fornication, now it's affecting their body. Fornication sins against their own body. Now it's using the pronoun his, but obviously it's applicable to men and women. <laughs> oh, I can certainly justify to that. My wife has children, too. She doesn't look exactly the same. As she did prior to having them, right? Physically, mm -hmm. so you're doing something that affects everything about you. That's right. Even your physical body. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. 
Absolutely. Now, this is something that women are using as a motivation for abortion, too. That's right. To protect that youthful body. Right. We, 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 we see that right. in action here. And so he carries on his thought, the reason why you flee fornication and the reason why you flee it is because you don't want this sin against your body. And here's why. It's because you might not know it, but your body is the temple of the Spirit of God who lives in you, whom you have received from God. And now catch this. You are, are not, not your, your own. own. You are not your own. You are bought yes, with a price. We're, pur we're purchased. Therefore glorify God with your body and with your spirit, which are God's. Now this talks directly to the argument that those on one side are making. It's my right to do what I want to with my body. <laughs> Scripture is very clear. No, you don't. Because you don't belong to you. Do not belong to yourself. When don't. God formed you in your mother's womb, you became his property. And all through your life, every act that you have done, you have done either in his will for you or contrary to his will for you. To your and own detriment. To your own detriment. And he says... You don't have the right to do that. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right to make those decisions that destroy the body that I have purchased, that I have redeemed. Wait, that wait, he created. That he first created. Of, first of all. That's right. Right. He made and it. Then and then redeemed. And then redeemed. And then bought it back. By his own life. So people who even, we have a little proverb in our culture. It's my life. Mm. What they're saying is, I can smoke. I can eat anything I want. I can do whatever I want because it is my life. Once again, mm -hmm. looking into the will of God, plainly uh, uh, here in the scripture, mm -hmm. we discover something kind of shocking. I think you said that. Mm -hmm. It's not your life. No. Right. It's, so to be very, very blunt and clear, not only is your life not your own, your re reproductive life is not your own, but once you have reproduced, once reproduction has taken place and another life exists within you, that life does not belong to you either. No, it does not. I hope you can see that those who claim to be Christian, and trust me, I do understand that many who claim that name and who vote with their stickers and their buttons and their hats. And bumper stickers. Yeah. And say, I'm with him, or make it great again, or whatever. I'm a conservative Christian. Many of those who claim that title do not represent the man whose title they, they have they're wearing. That's right. They have hijacked. Yes. Hijacked. But s those who are sincere about this issue are sincere about the issue because they honestly, honestly, do not believe you to be the owner of your body, hmm. nor do they believe you to be in charge of making decisions for the other life mm -hmm. that exists within your body. Mm -hmm. Which isn't yours. Which it also isn't yours. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a very passionate feeling and belief structure mm -hmm. that exists within those who are Christian, who are Christ's, who belong to him. Obviously, they're going to be passionate about it. And sometimes in their passion to be compassionate, they are uncompassionate. That's right. Mm -hmm. To the point where some have rushed into abortion clinics mm -hmm. to kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They let their emotions rule over their, their mind. Mm 
Over That's over not Christianity. No. no. I've seen fist fights mm-hmm. over the topic. No, yeah. wrong. Yeah. Hurtful wrong. arguments where mm-hmm. expli- ex- expletives. <laughs> expletives and insults just yeah. flew, flew at will. People right. hurt. That isn't Christianity. No. That isn't, uh, I should if say, you have experienced, should say it like this maybe. That does not have anything to do with Christ. That's right. Christ is not involved. And if you have experienced that, if you have experienced the condemnation, the criticism, the name calling, the, the condemnation, all that goes with it, uh, I apologize. I ask your forgiveness. Because it was yeah. wrong. That is wrong. not the way to handle it. And it's not the message that the God that loves you would want to get across. No. No. You know, we can name a, a whole laundry list of things that are destructive and hurtful and contrary to what he wants for us. Uh, sexual addictions and um, fornication, obviously. Um, homosexuality. Homosexuality. Um, alcoholism. Uh, addiction to Oreo cookies. Um, mm-hmm. Wasting money uh, in time yeah. and in yeah. energy on, on things that are unproductive. There are so many things that we could talk about that are contrary to His will because they're destructive, destructive. to the people that He loves. That's right. Mm. That's right. And while He's not going to take your ability to make those painful life choices, He's going to do everything He can to convince you there's a better way to do it and if Christians if all they're doing is name calling and making you feel bad and and being contentious that's not the message it's not and I feel terrible that that's what takes place all too often yeah it's it's embarrassing let's let's just look at this again simple you told the story that this girl came back to you after 20 mm. years. And she was still hurt. It's hurting. still turning. That's what we're trying to do here tonight. Let's divert our course from doing something that's going to be a negative emotional burden that's right. for years and years to come. That's right. Now, we're going to speak to another. This is very pointed. And we're going to make some points here that are going to be very hard, but, but they need to be made. Necess- absolutely necessary. Mm-hmm. There are consequences That's right. to decisions. That's right. God will not be mocked. What a man soweth, That's right. that we- That's right. he shall also reap. That's right. That's right. So, so in spite of his best intentions to save you from those consequences... If he can't. And our desire with this conversation yes. to try to save someone yeah. additional yeah. suffering right. yes. Life because life. of a decision they make. That's right. mm. If they stay the course in that decision and in that destructive behavior, they will they must. suffer consequences yes. that even God himself can't protect them from. No. You know, my daddy, my stepdaddy was a heavy smoker. Stepdaddy. I've, I've heard him wake up in the morning and cough. I, I, I should have recorded it because you can't even believe it with your mind and your ears that he would cough 10, 20, 30 minutes almost uncontrollably. Later in life, he got emphysema and he gathered us around and he said he was sorry that he had smoked. 40 years. Mm. Now, he was sorry. He tried to warn us away from it, but look at the consequences. Mm. He did not escape. That's right. The con- he walked around the house with that tube in his nose for the last several years of his life, and he fell down in the tub because he couldn't breathe, and his heart finally gave out because that was it. Right. The consequences are there. Can't escape them. Can't escape. So God we're gonna is not s- mocked. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to talk specifically about an idea that's found in Scripture that relates to abortion and the willful intent 
to take the life, a life, a human being, a person in the womb, as scripture, as we have seen, scripture defines mm-hmm. life Define. as something that starts at conception Amen. because God is involved and he gives life and that life in the womb is God's life he's because the he's the God of the living. Yes. Source and owner. He's That's the right. source and the owner. So when you intentionally take life, go ahead. It's laying out the possibility of a set of circumstances that could take place and how we should respond. And it says this, follow along. If two men are fighting, and they strike a pregnant woman. Now, they're just fighting. They're going at each other. Mm-hmm. I've been in those kind of fights. Sure. You're not always aware of your surroundings. Other people that are standing around watching. Sometimes get involved. They get sometimes hurt. get involved. They get, they, they get you, you push, you hit, someone falls on them. I, I've seen it happen. I've been involved with them yep. myself. So here we are. Two men are fighting, and there is no intent here. They accidentally strike a pregnant woman, and her children are born prematurely. But there is no harm. He's to be fined. He's going to be fined. That's right. This is purely an accident. There was no intent to hurt this woman to cause a premature birth. And even if there was nothing wrong with the child, there's still going to be a consequence. Still going to be, yeah, these men are still going to be required to suffer loss. That's right. Mm-hmm. As a result of the consequence of their irresponsible behavior. That's right. Their irresponsible, willful behavior. Catch Continue. the rest of this. But if there is harm, to this, to this prematurely born baby, if there is harm, then you are to require life for life. If the baby's born with eyesight problem, eye for an eye. If the mouth is uh, mm-hmm. may, maybe a cleft palate or something, there's a birth defect that takes place and it affects the mouth. Tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. If there is any life-altering or life-taking consequence to that woman's prematurely born child, the consequence will be... That you will suffer in kind. You will suffer in kind. Brothers... Now catch this. Doesn't this tell us that there's life in the womb? It absolutely (laughs) does. Life for life. So, so say this premature their birth results in the death of the child. Mm-hmm. Purely accident still. Accidental. Unintended. There is no intent. Unintended. There is no premeditation. Yet if the life is ended or the life is affected, it is to be eye for eye, tooth for tooth, and life for, for life. life. How is it that we can think that we can intentionally take life, the life of this unborn child? I'm at a loss for words. I I don't even understand. Just ask it again. If if this is talking about an accidental uh, injury or death, and it's a life for life, even if it's an accident, What could we expect? This is the will of God being revealed here in this scripture, Exodus chapter 21. What? What, How does God view if we willfully, intentional, take someone's life? And we're talking specifically about an unborn child. Mm -hmm. Specifically. Let let me speak to it if if you don't mind. Because there's some confession to be had. When I was confronted with the scenario that I earlier described on the first video before we mess that up, I was in a relationship 
everybody involved wanted the child's the 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 early pregnancy to be terminated hmm. except for me but i was also scared i was not prepared to be a father <clears throat> So at the suggestion that almost the demand that they be permitted without any unnecessary, irresponsible behavior on my part mm -hmm. to proceed with their plan to terminate the pregnancy. My inclination was inside of my own heart. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as I disagree with this, I would be dodging a bullet myself. Oh, yeah. So when I was asked by the woman who I was in relationship with, please don't leave me. I really feel like this is the right choice for me to make in my life at this time. As I'm, I, I, you know, I can't miss my first year at this job. I can't let this destroy my career before it even begins. I've just dropped, you know, along with her parents, how much money on this education. She had reasonable demands. And so, here's the thing. Danny, you had the opportunity to possibly convince this person not to go through with it by threatening abandon, abandoning the relationship. Because she, she loved me. She really did. I could have threatened to leave, and it possibly may have been enough to protect that life. But I didn't. I promised her I'd stay. Mm. I promised her I'd be supportive even though this was not my decision. It wasn't the decision that I mm. wanted. Mm. In that moment, I became an accessory. Mm. Did you think this through at the time? For, sure. I, you, I know. Have, you, have, have you ever known me, regardless of how bad my decisions, not to at least think them through before well, no, I made Well, no, that's them? good. I, I, I admire your... Fullness in these studies. Yeah. So you, you I, were thinking I, I it made. I, I said, if I do this, Thanks it for will your honesty, brother. I it will definitely it. end badly. Right. Right. But I will benefit in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So although all of my convictions tell me no, resist, protect mm -hmm. the life, mm -hmm. everything in me was screaming out. The most guilty person is me because I knew what was right mm -hmm. and I did it not. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. I am way more guilty than she is. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think so, but you're, you're putting a heavy thing on your own shoulder. And this is the reason why I'm saying it. I think because someone, hand in that someone thing, watching this video is either about to make that decision or they've already made it well, and it was something. just like mine. Yeah. And and once you have made it, where do you go? Yeah. Life for life. That's what it says. Yeah. Lord, Here's where you can go. In your mind, mentally, you can go back in history to a hill called Calvary. Yes. And there you will find... Mm an innocent man, the son of the living God, being crucified for your sins and for mine. And he, per he decided that that's exactly what he would do before the world was made. Back before you were born, while he was planning your creation, he was dying for your salvation. Mercy. Mercy. He placed that kind of value on your life. 
before you even existed. Oh, boy. This is so wonderful. The requirement for the penalty of this behavior that we've discussed tonight. Which we need to say out loud, life for life. Is death. That's right. That's right. A life was required. It's a death penalty. That's right. A, a, a boarding children is worthy of death. That's right. And if it was worthy of death through accident, I can assure you, in God's perspective, it is far more worthy of death when it's intentional. When it's intentional. And as you're saying, though, it is such a serious thing to him, we don't want to lose sight of that, that the taking of this life with willful intent and premeditation is a heinous sin, but it is still one that he has bore the penalty for. The life for life has already occurred. Has already occurred. Yes. But that's not to diminish the reality that the act and decision to engage in a behavior that willfully takes a life at whatever stage in the process in the womb is abhorrent and from God's perspective requires the life of the individuals making the decision. Yeah. It is that serious of an offense. And that's and the re- and the repercussions not only will you experience them in your own life, mm-hmm. not only will you suffer damage, but as a culture and a country, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. we will call upon ourselves yeah. the judgments yeah. and wrath yeah. of a righteous God. Right. The Bible says the righteousness of, Righteousness exalts a nation, but a sin is a reproach to any people. Now, what about our country? What what part of what which one of those two highways are we on right now? God help us. Yeah. Amen. Was there we're anything a, after this? No, we're Was at, we're at a, an hour and 30 minus. That's good. That's, that's on the second we, we video. We can't play with this, wow. brother. We can't play with this. Let us pray for you tonight. Father, someone out there in video land on Facebook, YouTube, or beyond is facing a decision tonight. Maybe it's in respect to abortion. Maybe it's in respect to murder. Maybe... It's the temptation of of fornication or adultery. Ultimately, we are doomed without you. We ask for your intercession, for your intervention in our lives. Intervention. And for those who are suffering and struggling with decisions like those we've discussed. And we ask that you will show yourself powerful. Powerful, Lord. In the lives of these people. Those of you who are struggling with such decisions, we simply ask that you pray. Father, help me. Father, show me. Yes. Father, forgive me. And, my, and this, this is the thing. This is the confidence we have. That the work that he started, he will complete. He loves you yes. and will help you. Yes, and Lord, we're asking for your help now. Yes. And we thank you and praise you for how you will answer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night.